All right, today I have one of the elite women pro athletes in the IFBB today, Mela Ash. I did, I, did I pronounce it right? Yes, you did. You got it perfectly. Thank okay. you. And thank right. you for having me on. Oh, thank you for being on. Are you kidding? Like I was saying before we started, I appreciate every person who comes on because, uh, you know, it's not like I'm a huge podcast with like hundreds of thousands of subscribers, you know? So it's difficult, you know. I've, I've heard stories of like, there was this guy, Tim Poole, who has his own big podcast, right? And uh, he was supposed to be on Joe Rogan. And he finally got on Joe Rogan. But the first two times, he actually flew out. And then Rogan canceled on him. And he actually actually flew out to him already. He was already there. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then he canceled. And finally, the third time he got on. I can't do that. <laughs> so before we get started, can you tell everybody to like and subscribe to the best YouTube channel series and silliness that you've ever taken part in. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Mayla Ash. And before we even get started finding out a little bit more about me, I want you to like and subscribe to Serious and Serious and, and Silliness. Silliness. That's it. YouTube channel. The, the most awesome YouTube channel that there's out there. Straight out some sauce. Talk to you guys soon. With the, mo with the most handsome. No? <laughs> <It's a> fabulously, <laughs> ruggedly handsome yeah. host <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and commentator. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't think I'm handsome, just listen to me on Spotify and Apple. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let, let's get into it. Mela, you turned pro as physique, as a physique competitor, right? Thank you. Figure. I started in figure. <laughs> oh, and that was 2013. Do I have that right? Yes. I turned pro um, at, back then it was called Team Universe. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah July 2013. So. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I might have actually been there. Who knows? Um, yeah, because that's right in my backyard, you know. Um, so you turned pro as in figure, and did you compete pro as a figure, or you went into physique? No, actually, um, I spent a couple of years competing as a figure competitor. Okay. Um, I, to be honest with you, when I first came into the sport, I wanted to do physique, but um, I have a little OCD. So the whole idea of um, walking around outside without shoes. So when I came to my first competitor's meeting, and, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I, I, I want to do women's physique and everything. And I was, they were like, I was like, I've got my shoes. I had got the federations kind of confused because back then there wasn't as much um, workshops as they are now. Right. And they was like, oh, no, our federation, the physique competitors don't wear shoes. So they were like, you don't need those shoes. I was like, oh, oh, then what's the other division that I can actually wear shoes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it is, it is weird. It, it is, is weird. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I only did, you know, NPC shows. But yeah, like going on stage in, in your bare feet is a little little strange. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it's, it is. And it's still, it's still an issue that I, I struggle with. I've gotten better with it, but yes. But I'm going to be honest with you. It's even in hindsight, it looks a little weird to see women in like four or five inch heels hitting some of the poses that we did in women's physique and women's bodybuilding, like in other federations. I'm like, when I look back and I look at them, I'm just like, that's a really weird looking world. But yes, I actually, back to the, um, the, the topic, I did, um, once I crossed, I mean, once I um, crossed over to pro, I did um, compete from 2013 to 20, um, actually 16 as a figure competitor. Oh, so, okay. Yes. And, and so I, I did, pre I'm like, in the beginning, you know, I struggled because I didn't, I wasn't amateur for very long. Um, I competed in about two shows and then I went to nationals and I earned my pro card. And so I actually learned the sport on the pro stage, which is very, very humbling. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, that's how, you know, you're destined to be a professional because, yeah. you know, uh, you know, I, I, all respect to people who grind and take five, seven, eight years to turn pro. You know, you know, mm -hmm. one of my very good friends, 
And he's always, he's been on my podcast twice. Vinny Galante took, you know, I don't know, 15 years before he turned Mm -hmm. pro, whatever it was, it was unbelievable. But the people that turn pro like that, that's how you know they're destined to, they're just destined to be top elite, whatever. I mean, you know, bodybuilders or whatever Mm -hmm. uh, women's class you decide to go in. You know, it's it's inevitable. You know, it's kind of like, you know, I, you know, it's, it's like LeBron James right out of high school, one pro. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and it's just yeah. like you, you see that person, you go, OK, she's got it. That's it. She's, she's got it. You know, like like Nick Walker. And he was like, all right, that, you know, that's a pro. Just give him his card already, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. like, why are you bothering with him going on stage? Just yeah. give him a card. Yeah. And just show them where the pro the next pro contest is going. To <laughs> yeah, be and right, right. And there are people like that. And obviously that's that's yourself. So what? So you got over the fact that you didn't have to wear shoes. You, yeah, I had no choice. Yeah, um, you really don't. <laughs> I had no choice because one of the things that um, was a problem for me was because I was in track and field most of my life. I came in with muscle density. I'm like, I wasn't big, but I was really dense. Mm-hmm. So you know, that was always my feedback. It was just like, Maylee, you got a lot of muscle. <laughs> so I was like, right, oh. right, right. and they always say, you look great on stage by yourself. But the second they do a call out and then I'm standing next to the other figure competitors, you know, they were just like, you look kind of. Yeah. So 2016 was, you know, I knew that there was nothing I could do. I'm, um, you know, um, I was competing, you know, in the U.S. And then I went to Toronto and I was still having the same issue. It didn't make a difference. You know, once I got on stage, I was always top 10 and I would always get that call out and I would be center. Mm-hmm. And then the second everybody else came out. I knew it was, you know, it was like you get there and everybody started coming out and it's just like five, four, and there we go. Let's go ahead and move over to the side. And so oh, how frustrating I decided, that. you know, I decided to just take the rest of the season off and I just told myself, you know what, I'm just going to get back to just training the way that I love to train because in 2016, I literally spent most of the season training with bands. Like I couldn't lift any weights. Wow. I'm like, yes. And so it was to the point, it was like, why am I bothering? Right. If I'm literally in the gym, like literally before Toronto, I didn't even bother going to the gym anymore because my whole workout was with, with just bands. I was like, why am I bothering going to the gym? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it was cardio and bands. Right. And so I was like, I'm gonna get back to lifting. And 2017, I'm just going to see what my body tells me to do. And so I decided to do I tried women's physique in Toronto. I went back to Toronto 2017 Mm -hmm. and women's physique and I placed fifth. And the, you know, um, Gary just told me, he was just like, you need to come in tighter for women's physique. Mm -hmm. And so the next week I went to the mile high because that during that time period, they actually had women's fully. And I actually um, earned my first Olympia qualifications at that show. So, so did you actually win that show? Yes, I won. So, so I placed yeah. fifth at my pro what my at my debut for women's physique at Toronto. And then the following week when I went to Mile High, I won that show. One one week. One week you improved so much that you won the next pro show. Yeah. So I was I, I was kind of yeah. excited about that. Look, I don't, you know, look, I, I don't want to blow smoke, but it's the God's honest truth. You were destined to be, obviously. I mean, if you can make that much of a change in a week and then come out winning, you're destined to be a professional athlete. It's just that's just the way it is. I mean, unfortunately, you know, they, you got some competition, though. Yeah, <laughs> you got deep, deep competition. Yeah, so, yeah. So do you do women's bodybuilding now? Yes, I do. Okay. I crossed what, over um, in 2020. Okay. Same thing happened. You know, I was doing women's physique. And once again, I was in front of Gary and I didn't place as well as I anticipated, but this time I kind of knew. I'm like, when I came into check-ins and I'm looking at everybody and I'm like, oh, they're just new pros, you know? And then I started seeing people that I knew (laughs) and I was like, okay, they look really small this season. (laughs) And so, yeah, I didn't do well. I got some feedback and Gary was just honest. And that's one thing that I, I always tell people, go get your critique from the judges Mm -hmm. because he was just bluntly honest one sentence i sent an email hey what improvements do i need to make you know to get back to that olympia level and he was just like you did nothing wrong he was like your package looked perfect your suit your hair you look perfect you're just too big for the division you need to move to women's bodybuilding i'm like it was like the end 
Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. next the next week I did New York Pro, one that qualified for the Olympia <laughs> um, in women's bodybuilding. And that's when, you know, women's bodybuilding was just coming back. So it was a yeah. huge you know, it was a huge honor for me to actually qualify. So, and and how did you do in the Olympia? You came in. Fourth, I came fifth? the first, the first, um, the inaugural coming back. I placed fourth. So, okay, yes, which is pretty damn good because women's bodybuilding is stacked. Yes, especially now. Yeah, like it's made a shift. Like you know, a few years back, you know, five seven years ago, women's physique was like stacked, and then as soon as um. Jake Wood, was that his name, right? Jake Wood? Yes, Jake Wood. He purchased the Olympia. Yeah, and then, then all of a sudden, like, all the talent shifted, you know? Yeah. And all the girls that were trying to, like, like doing what you did, like, they were like, oh, well, there's a division for me now. Like, boom. You yeah. know? And I've had some of them on, and some of them are tremendous, tremendous athletes. And one of them is a good friend of yours, Sheena. Sheena, Sheena yes. Yeah. That's my fist. <laughs> she, is, she is, I mean... On stage, when she's in shape, on stage, she's, I mean, probably one, probably the most aesthetic looking female bodybuilder. Oh no, she's 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 gorgeous. I'm yeah, like, it, I saw her earn her Olympia qualification, um, um, last year. So when I was at the show, and that was the first time I met her, and like I peeked backstage, and I was just like, I was like, diva. <laughs> I was yeah. like. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah. like, what? I was like, you look fabulous. I was like, well, shift your leg a little bit. I was just like, you're, you're leaving a lot in backstage. Shift your leg a little bit. And ever since then, you know, we've been, we've been besties. And so, yes, I, I love her. And I tell everybody, I was just like, you know, because she's like, she's three inches taller than me. And she, I was just like, she is just a powerhouse. And she she's really is. so aesthetically beautiful on stage. It's like, she has a presence. And that's what I told her when I started on stage. Um, when she earned her qualification, I was just like, you walked out on stage and I was just like, some people just step out on stage and they have a presence. They have a wow factor. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I do. told her. I was just like, you, you can't take, I said, you just can't take your eyes off of you when you yeah. step on stage. I was like, you are phenomenal. I and agree. So I, I absolutely her. agree. When, and especially her front double bicep and her front yeah. lat spread. I mean, it's just a tremendous X. Ex- you know what she reminds me of? The female um, Tony Freeman. Remember Tony okay. Freeman? Yes, yes. He had that beautiful X factor, mm-hmm. tall and wide. He was he was outstanding on presence yes. on stage. That's what she reminds me of. So getting back to you. So now you win the New York Pro 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, you come in fourth at that Olympia. Right. All right. Now, 2020 was a rough year. 2020, well, 2021 was a rough year. 2020 was a, a, actually a great year. <laughs> oh, well, it depends how you look at it. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. You didn't have, yeah, okay. Like, okay. Okay. So I'm just like 2020, I'm like, because I was coming out of 2019. Um, and so how I always did is that as soon as I come out the Olympia, I take a couple of weeks off and I start my development phase. Like some competitors like to wait to the next year. Mm. And so I start my development phase as you know, before the end of the year. And then, you know, I would start my cutting. And so when COVID hit and they locked out all the gyms, I'm like, I had already put on some size. Mm -hmm. So it was like, oh, okay, well, I can maintain stuff by doing my athletic, you know, my track and field kind of workouts, you know, on the track, doing that, doing calisthenics, bringing my bands and all this stuff like this, and I'll be fine. So, you know, like, that's, that's, a, that's amazing. That's amazing that you can maintain that much muscle by doing some calisthenics and bands. Well, the thing is that, I mean, do you, like, do you realize how genetically gifted you are? Do you realize well, that there are people in the, the gym thing. that are like probably hate you? When you say calisthenics, <laughs> you know, a lot of people think, oh, she's talking about jumping jacks, but it's more than just, I'm like, it's weighted calisthenics, you know, and it's okay. like time under tension. I'm like, you're doing jumping jacks with bands and ankle weights and like dumbbells and everything. And you're doing like four sets of 50 mm. with time under tension and jump squats and then following through with, you know, so it's like this huge, and that's what we used to do with track and field. I'm like, because mm-hmm. we didn't do as much powerful weightlifting. We did weightlifting for that muscle and doing some muscle power. And so I just went back to that. So you don't need as much heavy weight. Mm-hmm. You just need to be able to do endurance kind of lifting. And so, you know, and for us, it's different for you guys, but down um, in Texas, our gyms were only closed for like 
two, a month and a half. Oh, so uh-huh. I was able to get you back in the gym. Yes. Yes. And so I was, I was, I was fortunate about that. And so that was the whole thing. I just needed a month and a half. And so that was just a cutting phase. And then I got back to building again. And then eventually a show came present that I could actually do. But by that point, I had gotten too big because there were no other competitions. So there was no reference points. So mm-hmm. I didn't realize that I had lifted myself out of the class until I went to a show and I was like, wow, I've gotten really big. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I was like backstage, like, mm, this is not going to be a good show for me. I was like, I, I really don't think, you know, and people were like, but you're an Olympian. I was just like, no, this is not going to be a good show for me. And it was well, just like so obvious. So. What's great about bodybuilding today is like, you, you know, you could just move into the next category. Yeah, that's what's great. You know, there is a category for everybody's physique, you know, where, um, Years ago, it would have been you. You had two choices, you know. Uh, in the nineties, you had two choices: fitness and bodybuilding. That was it. You know, that is true. That is, I'm yeah. like, that is so true. And that's what I, you know, when I first crossed over to um to women's bodybuilding from women's physique, it was. It's funny because even now, you still have a lot of competitors who have that that mindset that you know this is the this is the division I have, and so this is the division I have to stay in because now they have all these divisions, and it was mm-hmm. just like. No. So people are like, are, are, are you going to take some time off so you can go back into women's physique? And I was like, why? Oh. I was like, why would I? I said, I love to train. I said, I love to build. I said, so so why would I try to go backwards? Yeah, absolutely. I said, this is the natural progression. I was like, I went from women's figure to women's physique. To, I said, I was meant to be in women's bodybuilding. And I said, I no longer have to hold back in the gym. Mm-hmm. I said, I was always holding back. I was always on stage where don't flex too much, you know, don't don't open up too wide. And you're like, oh, you look you look too big for your division. I said, now I said I'm free to push myself in my training, mm-hmm. push myself to see just how, you know, how I, far I can take my body. And so it's exciting. And so yes, I'm I'm really excited about everything. But yeah, 2021 was a hard year for me because it's the training, I spent so much time with this condition, with this mindset of, you know, train just enough to get conditioned, but don't try to put on size. But obviously in women's bodybuilding, that's not the mindset you have, you need to have. You need to try to keep your symmetry, your balance. But, you know, you know, there's so many people that's always like, oh, women's bodybuilding is about being as big as possible. And it's like, no, there's other dimensions. You need to have your symmetry, your balance, muscle density, you know, and conditioning. And so, I, I didn't just look at the, look at the winners they pick and you could see, you could see that's the case. And so, but I'm like, yeah, I'm like, it was hard for me because as I'm trying to um, get ready for the 2021, as I'm trying to start lifting heavier with my legs, I found out that um, I had a, um, um, a foot injury that I tried to work through, which didn't go so well. I'm like, so we thought that we can, my orthopedic surgeon thought that it can just give me some injections to help. I had some tendons and some ligaments caught in between one of my joints Ooh. from inflammation. So they were like, well, we can try to take the inflammation out, you know, by some injections mm-hmm. and maybe it will release itself. But as the month, I mean, as the months went by, it just got worse. And he's like, you need to have surgery. And I was like, I can't have surgery. I was like, I can't afford to be out for like eight weeks, you know, right. getting ready. I was like, I'm getting ready to do like two big shows. And so long story short, it wound up impacting, you know, my conditioning and just my, my symmetry and everything and not to make excuses and everything. I, you know, for the limitations that I had, I brought the best package I could, but you know, if everybody's trying to bring their hundred percent in the next level, you know, it is what it is. I'm like, it would, you know, I, I had the season that I, I deserved because of the situation I had. And so all that did was make me hungrier for this season. So I finally had my surgery after my last right. show. And so, you know, I had it in December. And so finishing with my, um, my rehabilitation, starting to really build the way that I, I, you know, I know that I can build my body and everything so I can get ready for this year's Olympia. So I'm excited about it. Oh, okay, good. So you had the surgery. When did you have the surgery? Actually had the surgery December 22nd. Okay. And how was the uh, recovery? Um, I actually just finished up my recovery 
like I got cleared to actually start putting pressure on the foot and kind of going back in the gym and doing some basic level training, um, like mid February. And mm-hmm. so it's been, it's been every week improves. So it gets better and better. I still have a problem with, um, like true flexion and putting, um, complete, you know, my total body weight on my foot. So certain poses I'm still trying to work with because I can't get that, you know, that plant mm-hmm. and that push off. But, you know, the training finally, I'm just like the lifting is finally, you know, the squats and the leg press is finally coming through. And so I'm excited about that, you know, to be able to actually put some real weight, you know, on the machines and actually move some real weight and start right. to start growing and everything. So when injuries are not an excuse, you know, people don't realize how physical it gets, you know, mm-hmm. you know, when the average person thinks of a professional bodybuilder, they think you go to the gym, you lift some dumbbells and you go home. And the truth of the matter is, you, you know, a, a professional bodybuilder, the way they train is like the majority of them. But there are mm-hmm. people that, you know, you know, do, you know, could get away with, you know, doing some light reps and whatnot. But the majority of them train like nobody's business. Like yeah. it's unreal. And injuries do happen. They happen all the right. time. There are pec tests, bicep tests, tricep tests, quadricep tests. I mean, there's, you know, shoulder surgeries, you know, mm-hmm. knee surgeries. It happens all the time and it does impact your, your, your training. And if it impacts your training, it's going to impact how you look on stage. That's just, it's just the way it is. Yeah. It's, it's the nature of the beast. And, you know, you can either let it like just really take you out, you know, mentally of the game and everything, or you can accept that fate. I'm like, it happens, mm-hmm. you know, and you just, you work around it and you, you know, you move forward and everything. It's a learning experience and you move forward. And so that's what it was for me. You know, I didn't make excuses. I didn't talk about it. You know, people were just like, you know, what's going on? I was just like, I'm struggling a little bit this year, but you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm going to keep yeah. powering through and just, you just do what you need to do. Yeah. So. And what, what's, what's, what's funny is that everybody's different with injuries. So there are people that are really prone to injuries. Mm-hmm. And then there are people that never get injured. And it's <laughs> unbelievable. So, um, Antoine Valiant is always getting hurt. Right. Uh, Dexter Jackson never had an injury in 20. 20- never had an injury. Never had. It's un- like, unbelievable. You know, and, you know, I, you know, people the like the well, longest running bodybuilding career <clears throat> in history and never was injured. Never and it was just like, just go die. I was yeah. just like, really? <laughs> I'm like, I saw him at the Olympia and I was like, you know, he's retiring. I'm just like, yeah. I'm just like, Dude, you never had an injury. I was just like, oh, just go kill yourself. Oh, my God. Because you know, I'm struggling with my foot and everything. Yeah. The last Arnold Classic he won, because he won like 14,000 of them. But the last one that he won, right? I don't even know. With, with all the different Arnold Classics. You, make it, you can't even count anymore. You're yeah. Like, you, you won all of them. The but last one, I was I was watching the, the interview. I don't remember who it was with. And they asked him, you know, how, how long he dieted and how he pre- prepped for the show. He died for eight weeks. He did 20 minutes of cardio a day. Yeah, no. And I'm like, all right, you know, you got to get, you know, and there are, there are guys out there doing, and women doing two hours a day, dieting for 16, with killing themselves, no carbs. And I'm like, wow, you know, that guy like that is just. You know. And he used to ride a bike. I'm like, yeah, it was yeah. nothing more heartbreaking than when every now and then he would get on Instagram and do like a live video feed. And you see him on his bike and everything as he's doing the bit. I'm sitting like, Really? Yeah. You're, you're going to do your life <laughs> on a, on an encumbered bike. I'm just like, yeah, really, it, as I'm sitting there on the stair mill, like, I, don't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's un it's unreal. And the difference is, and, and then there's everybody else in between, you know, and right. then there's, you know, it's, un, it's unreal. All right. So 2021 comes around. You have the, uh, you have a bad year for you. Mm-hmm. It's a bad year. Did you, did you, how did, how well did you do in 2021? I understand you were um, hurt, but I understand you were injured, but yeah, what was I placed your contest? 11th um, at the Rising Phoenix, and I placed 11th at the Olympia. And mm-hmm. Then um, I did Romania. How did you qualify for the Olympia? For this year? For 2021. I did Toronto at the end of the year. I'm ah, like, I did okay. Romania. Well, because the thing was for me <laughs> is that um, it, it, it hurt my soul that I didn't do as well. And even though I understood, you know, why I'm like, it's still the the idea that, you know, to go from being ranked fourth in the world to drop it down to 11th, you know, it was such a huge, you know, kind of situation. And then to see myself 
that the progress, I didn't make the kind of progress that I had envisioned in my mind. And so mm. I had already committed, um, as in not signing the contract, but actually, you know, telling, you know, um, um, fans and everything that I was going to start because I always wanted to go international because I think that we need to start doing that. I think more um, U.S. competitors need to start doing more international shows so we can get a unification of what the image of um, female bodybuilding is because a lot of times I used to always hear that, oh, well, that's American female bodybuilding. You know, this is European female bodybuilding. I was like, no, it's just female bodybuilding. Mm. I was just like, what are they that trying to say? There is what are they trying to say? There's a different look, right? And see the whole okay. because the, everybody's mindset is always well, you know, she always wins over here. Well, if that's all that shows up, somebody has to win. That's that doesn't point. mean that that's the look. Mm -hmm. It's just that somebody has to win. Right. And so that's one of the things. It was just like you know, if there's going to be a true evolution of the of the of the division, we need to have more Europeans coming to the U.S. We need to have more um, Americans going out to the, the European show so that we have a consistency of, you know, a mix of like just looks going yeah. onto the stage so that there's a clear understanding across the board what it is. But I did Romania and placed third. And then five weeks later, I did um, it was I was supposed to have my surgery after Romania mm -hmm. and I placed third. And so I went back and forth about whether or not I was going to, you know, I was, I'm going to try to get that Olympia because my mindset was, if I go ahead and have the surgery, that means that I need to recover faster and then start the prep and shorten my development time. So I was just like, I'm going to try for one more show and see mm -hmm. if I can get the automatic qualification mm -hmm. and then have my surgery. And then that's going to give me at least plenty a of time, eight, nine months of just getting ready. Right. you know, for the Olympian. So I took that chance, did Toronto. I won that show. Oh, so, very nice. Right. So I was, I was so excited about that. I was thankful. And so it was like, I got back and I was like, time to have surgery. So yeah, <laughs> flew yeah, back, yeah. went into the hospital, had the surgery. I'm like at Christmas is like, yeah, yay. Merry Christmas with me and my fat foot. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I, I, uh, you know, I actually had in, in 2020, I had uh, three discs removed, replaced with bone oh. and spinal fusion. Uh, yeah, with titanium. Oh. So, you know, I, I mean, I'm, you know, and it's, you know, it's it's from all the years of heavy lifting. And, and yes. you know, I mean, I know I look young, you know, but. <laughs> well, I'm, actually, you, you do look great for you. I'm like, fitness is the fountain of youth. So. <laughs> oh, go on. Tell me more. <laughs> I'm actually sure if you were plugging for the compliment or not, but I was going to give it to you anyway. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I actually just turned 46 last week. Oh, well, you look like a baby. So I'm mm. just like, <laughs> oh, you're, you're coming back on like next week. <laughs> He's <laughs> like it for the fifth time straight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to be on all the time. Uh, but yeah. So, um, and it was just all the years of, you know, heavy lifting. Cause you know, I don't know how old you are, but I'm generation X. Mm -hmm. And, um, and when I was in high school, you know, uh, and you wanted to go to a gym, there were no new retros. There were no New York sports clubs. There was no LA mm -hmm. fitnesses. You went to the hole in the wall dive gym that the neighborhood bodybuilder owned. And there was only one way to work out. That was it, <laughs> you know, and they showed you and, and that was it. So I remember the first gym I ever went to was Ferrigno's gym. They had, oh, one wow. of, yeah, cause he owned, he owned one in Brooklyn and he owned one in Staten Island. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to Ferrigno's gym and then I went to another gym called Atlas. Cause then I had moved to Staten Island by that point. That was from, I was living in Brooklyn and I moved to Staten Island and Atlas was like the same kind of dungeon gym, you know, mm -hmm. then they started popping up and then, and then it was uh pumping iron, which was another, then, then by that point it was the late nineties. And then like, you know, then the mm -hmm. retros and the LA fitnesses started coming up, but the guys, you know, they were all competitive, either really, really competitive bodybuilders or powerlifters. And they were right. all like, you know, there was loud music playing and just you know, huge speakers on the wall. And, you know, and it was just they were training hard and 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 that was it. And they showed you how to how to train hard. And and and, now, you know, it was like there was only one way. Right. And um, and so all the years of doing that. Uh, you know, finally caught up to me, you know, it takes a toll. I'm just it does. Like, real, real lifting takes a toll on the body. I'm yeah. like, it does. It's just, it's the nature of the beast. And yeah, so, yeah. And I just never had the genetics to, 
to turn pro. I mean, I, you know, I won a couple of local shows and I knew, I remember, I remember I won, I won the Brooklyn Grand Prix. Mm-hmm. Right. And I won the Masters Brooklyn Grand Prix. Okay. Uh, I was 35 or something like that. I don't remember. Whatever. 34, whatever it was. And um, I was like, all right. You know, I'm thinking I'm hot shit, right? I won, I'm like, I'm going to go to Team Universe. I'm going to see what it's like. And next year, I'm going to do Team Universe. Right. I go to Team Universe. I'm sitting in the audience. And, uh, and, and John Meadows wins the show. And I go, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done. There's no <laughs> way I could do that. I can't be that. I, I cannot. There's no way in the world I could look like that. And I just came to terms with myself. And I'm like, all right, that, I'm, I'm not even wasting my time. Anymore. That's ridiculous. And I was like, and then, and then what was funny is I told that story to my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law thinks, you know, my sister-in-law is like, she's like, oh, you could beat him. I'm like, no, you just, no, no, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. My sister-in-law has been married to my brother for 30 years. Like I've noticed since the first grade. So she thinks I walk on water, you know? Oh, like, that's so, but that's so sweet. I'm just yeah. like, but that's the thing I love about families. Oh, you yeah. can do it. No, 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 no really. No. There's no one. No, no, I'm not beating John Meadows. It's just, and it's just, I was like, all right. And that was literally, I was like, all right. Cause that was all said. I remember I went to go, I went to go visit because I'm on the East coast. So I went to go visit, uh, Oscar Arden. I wanted him mm-hmm. to train me. Right. And I was all ready. And I remember I went to team universe and, uh, I was like, no, I can't do that. I can't. I'm, like, I'm going to be wasting my time, my money, my energy, and I'm going to get my ass handed to me. What's the friggin' point? You know, and I'm 35 or 36, however old I was. I don't remember. I'm like, it's a wrap. It's over. And John was a beast. Yeah, John, at John, he had that hard, grainy, grainy muscle yeah. over years of time of uh, right. uh, of training, you know, and, and I just, you know, you had to be a pro to stand next to him. You, you yeah, know, I'm you, just like... Yeah, it was, it was remarkable. Speaking of which, I hate to bring up uh, sad topics, but I mean, what do you think is going on? We lost Cedric uh, yesterday, which was really hurtful because that guy was truly one of the better ones. It was a veteran, a family man, great personality. I mean, uh, what do you think is happening? I mean, I know he had complications with COVID in his heart, but I mean, it's been for the last two years, we've lost a lot of people, a lot. I'm like, I, I'm like, it's. It, it is, you know, some of the people that we've lost, I know it was for, um, which is, is kind of sad that um, social media um, contributes everything to, you know, steroids and everything. You know, some people we lost to complications, like, um, like John, you know, he had complications, you know, had nothing to do. And so when people say that, it, it kind of hurts my heart because it's just like, it's almost like people are celebrating when you know somebody in our in yeah. our circle it's like see know? i told you so right see, i you told know? you so and it's like and it's oh, just you know. like you know yeah. but even if it is or not i'm like somebody dying you know it's, yeah. it's hurtful but i'm like for me i'm like i always wonder because i always me being always been in track and field most all of pretty much most of my life and everything you know, carrying around the, the the amount of weight that we have to with the muscle, you know, you have to you have to keep a strong cardiovascular kind of system and everything. And so, and I'm sure that when you post this, you know, somebody's going to say something crazy. I'm like, because nobody wants to hear it. But you know, it's it boils down to that that consistent kind of cardio activity you know a lot of times most bodybuilders only want to do cardio when it's time to get ready for the show Mm -hmm. but you're still carrying around such a huge amount of muscle mass for your frame so you're taxing that you know that 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 body that system you know and I, I think that between that and just always assuming that because we look healthy you know that we're not paying attention to all aspects of our, you know, of our health, you know? And that's why I tell people, I'm like, whether you're choosing to do um, some enhancements, you know, and I'm not, whether you want to or you don't want to, it shouldn't be a big deal. Just like people who choose to do recreational drugs or cocaine, look, whatever you want to do with your life, if you Mm -hmm. want to drink, whatever, if that's the choice that you want to leave, that's fine. But, you know, I think that we're at a point right now that we need to start being more um, health conscious as in 
a lot of our brothers and sisters need to get away from the mindset, well, I had my blood work done at the beginning of the prep, and so I'll have it done, you know, at the end of it. You know, as you as we get older and as you tax the body more, maybe you need to check it more often. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe mm-hmm. you need to look at more than just the standard stuff that we look at because, you know, there, there's so much that our body, you know, does and goes through and how it interacts with one thing. And I feel like a lot of times that we're so focused on one thing that this something on the side over here is what gets you. Yeah. You know, so I, I, know. I, I completely agree. And just to just to break it down mm-hmm. um, for, for people that don't know what you basically what you were trying to say is if your body is if, if you if you're naturally a 200 pound man. Mm-hmm. And you put a hundred pounds of muscle on your heart, liver, kidneys, lungs are still for a 200 pound man. Precisely. And that, and that extra weight is a lot of stress on, on those, on it's those extra work. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of stress on those organs. And now we see bodybuilders because diet is different. Working out is different. Supplements are different. We see a lot of bodybuilders getting into their uh, you know, late thirties, early forties and still yes. winning and so on and so forth. But th- that's still years of stress on Precisely. your body. And, you know, Cedric was 44, but for a bodybuilder, he was a huge human being. Yes. You know, yes. I mean, he was a juggernaut. I'm yeah. just like, he was a huge human being. Yes. And, you know, Lee Haney retired, I think at 30 or 31, he was done. Yes. You mm-hmm. know, now bodybuilders are going into their forties, but that being said, you know, there, we still have things like we still have, tragedies like Boston Lloyd and George Peterson and, yes. um, you know, uh, Dallas McCarver. Um, I mean, Dallas McCarver was before COVID, but in the last two years, that seems to be the only common denominator is COVID, whether it's the vaccine or COVID, because, it, you know, I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but we've never lost this many people. No, we and, haven't, you know, but I'm like on both sides of it. I'm just like, you know, for somebody like Cedric, that's my mindset with him. But then you have other people where, um, like Dallas, you know, Dallas was the next coming, you Mm -hmm. know, when he first came out. And I honestly feel that sometimes because of that, it's the social media hype. Mm -hmm. When all of a sudden the commentators and the fans are just like, oh my God, you're the, you're the next one. You're it. You're going to miss the living they're from the camp of that person. All they're looking at, in my opinion, is sometimes you have those, those trainers and those coaches and I can't, I'm not putting it all on the coaches. Cause I also believe that as adults, we have our own responsibility. It's our body. And the idea that you're just because some, some coach or some trainer or whatever is saying, Oh no, you need to do this. You know what? Um, if we do twice as much, we can get twice just faster and nobody wants to take the time i feel like that's the one thing that's wrong Mm -hmm. that's the other aspect of it there are certain people it's the age and it's the whole thing that they didn't adapt to that but then you have some people who they're trying to be the overnight success because somebody said they were the next coming the second coming and instead of earning those bones like dexter like phil heath like ronnie Nobody looks at the fact that they lost for years. Oh my God! No, and nobody. Then, nobody knew Ronnie they was. Finally, they finally got to that point and started winning. Yeah. So now you have all these young people that are coming into it, and yes, they have the potential. But instead of going through the natural progression, mm-hmm. they're going from being here to putting on a hundred pounds of muscle, right. and then trying to maintain it. Yeah. Trying to maintain that. Yeah. You know, yeah, we see it. We saw it. We saw it. Brett Wilkins, Regan Grimes. Absolutely. We see it all the time. Yes. You know, and so I feel like that's the problem. And so all of a sudden, you know, they're just like, oh, they deserve it's just like number one, there's certain coaches that get that are being demonized, you know, because a lot of times also you have those who are doing because it's it's threefold. It's those with age, like you said, they're going into their forties, they're Dexter went into his 50s, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm just like, and obviously the ones who are being smart about it and adjusting because Dexter always says he's like, he got to a point, he stopped squatting. He only when he came training legs, he only used leg press. He he adjusted for his age and his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. When people don't do that because they're too big trying to impress everybody on social media, 
and the gram, you know, yeah, but then yeah. you have those who they're got the potential. And instead of just earning the bones, you know, and earning their place and going through the natural, they want to be overnight successes, you know, and then you have the other ones who their coaches are like, oh, that's great. You, you've got such potential, but we're going to go ahead and go this naturally. But then you have their gym bros. Well, dude, you know what? Just go ahead and do this because I heard. And so they're doing stuff on the side mm -hmm. instead of following their program. And all of a sudden things go horribly wrong. Or they're not telling their coach that they're having complications. Mm -hmm. You know, you're having a heart problem or you're short of breath. I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm going to go ahead and beast out. And so it's this whole thing. I'm not taking this serious because we look good on the outside that mm -hmm. we don't we don't we don't take the, we don't take care of the inside until it's too late. So but that's just my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's a, it's it's an educated and an experienced opinion from somebody who is on the inside of bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not coming from some you know asshole at the gym. Excuse my language, but you know, really, I mean, there's a lot of assholes in the gym. Yeah, like you said, oh, it's just steroids. This guy's just start taking steroids. I mean, it's it's no, it, it, I mean, like it's it's an indirect response right. to steroids you know like you said the, the tremendous amount of muscle mass that that is put on is the, is really the strain but um i don't know i hope that this is the last one for a long time because cedric you know cedric was special you know what i mean like it, he was a special one he really was he he was he was he, he was not your typical bodybuilder he was a family man he was a hard worker he had those old school family values um i mean yeah he had, a, he had a very good, he was, he was a very inspirational and he had a good spirit. And so, and it was, it was just, but it was, it was like, it was, there's been a lot that has just been so unexpected and just so heartbreaking because yeah. they were, you know, you look at them and it's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's really unfortunate. It, you know, it, sh so. it shouldn't have been, it shouldn't have, it shouldn't have been him out of all the people, you know, he's not your typical, I'm going to hang out in the bodybuilding scene. He wasn't that guy, you know, no, and, and, exactly. and I, and, and he has children and that's, I could only imagine what his wife and his children go. I could only imagine you're not supposed to, you're not no. supposed to bury your, your, your parents, your parents. I mean, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase your that. Children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, your, your children are not supposed to bury you at such a young age. You know, no, I mean, he's I'm only like, 44 years old. It's, it's, yeah. Not, and I'm I mean, like, but the, the bull was the same. I'm just like, and George, I'm just like, and that was even more heartbreaking. I knew him, but the fact that he passed at the Olympia, yeah. you know, it was just like, and he was, he's such a sweet man, such a good mm -hmm. spirit, you know, loved his, love his, you know, it's, it's like what you said is just, there's some of them that is just like, you know, why you him? just hate yeah. right you just hate that it happened so yeah like you know there were there were bodybuilders i'm not going to mention names there are bodybuilders that have passed and you're like well that wasn't unexpected i mean right. you it's know like, i mean you know look what look you know look what he did in you know look he did look look at his lifestyle you know he was a, right he was a psychopath i wasn't you know and then there were bodybuilders like you know like george peterson or like um Cedric, where it's like, oh, really? Right. It's just no it, way. you open up and you find out, and it's just like it just hurts your it just hurts your soul. Cause like you yeah. said, I'm just like, not you. Not you. It's like yeah. some of it's just like, I'm surprised you made it this long. But then it's like others, you know, it's like so yeah, but. no, it's 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 the truth. And um, it's just you know, it's it's kind of like you know, Ozzy Osbourne, like, how the hell are you still alive? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you mean? know, you look at some people up sitting like, you know. You're sitting here and you're like you said, you're living this extreme lifestyle, you're doing this, you're doing that. And and somebody who is just they're good hearted, they're 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 inspirational, they're motivational, and they and all of a sudden it's just really it's just okay. And they're and they're, and they're they're how can I say this? He walked the walk. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like yes. He he didn't just talk like that. Uh, there was there were but there were bodybuilders out there that would talk a lot of talk a lot and motivational and inspirational. And I'm a 
I'm a and as soon as they social, turned off social media, they were they, all they, right. It they, was just like they oh, were a, they know? were a piece of shit. Yeah, and then right, but then, just like, yeah, and, but he was truly like a, he was a, a devout Christian family man. Mm-hmm. I remember. Well, uh, I don't remember what show he was that he won. Might have been the auto class. I don't remember, but he, you know, he won a few. And they said, "What are you going to do with the um? What are you going to do with the, uh, the the prize money?" He said, "I'm going to finish building my kids the treehouse in the backyard." Yeah, you know what I mean. And it's just like. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, I remember that and, show and, and, he won. I think it was right. the Arnold and he brought his little, he brought his kid up on stage and it was, it was just like, you know, okay. Cause I did not want to cry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll, cha- we'll <laughs> no, change the subject. Fine, but we'll you're right. I'm just like, All right, we'll you know, change the subject. so many good ones that it's just, it does break your heart. You know, that the ones that is just like, you're the reason that the sport has gotten so much drama and wow. why won't they take you? <laughs> just, <laughs> What kind, what kind of commitment did you make with the devil that you are making? <laughs> it's just like, yeah, you know. you're like you want to pray and God, and you go, God, give us back Cedric, and uh, and uh, and we'll give you right. It's just like so and so. All right. So like, what what does 2022 have in store for Mela Ash? Oh, let me see. Um, I'm like to be honest with you, and it's so funny because when people, you know. So, you know, what, what are your goals? And it's just, it's always, it's the goal never changes, you know, the mindset or the determination, but it's to be more better. I'm like, I, I want to bring a better look than I've, I've ever brought. You know, there's, there's a, there's a Mela Ash that's in my mind, you know, and I'm trying to bring her out and introduce her to the world. And so that's the whole thing is that I'm training hard, you know, putting on the size that I need to, getting my symmetry and my balance back and, you know, trying to create another living masterpiece Mm -hmm. that can just shock and awe, you know, and I want to, I want to get back to being one of the top in the world, you know? So, and as I tell myself, 2022 is my redemption year. So I'm just like, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to step back on stage and just tell them it's just like, don't call us to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't left. <laughs> so, now, are you going to do straight? You're going to go right to the Olympia? Or are you going to do a show before that? Actually, I am hoping um, I'm going to put in for an invite for the Rising Phoenix. Oh, okay. so yeah. You'll, I'm you'll like, get it. I'm sure you'll get it. Well, uh, you know, I, I'm humble enough to know that, as you said, I'm like, now the division is stacked. There are it a lot really of great is. competitors. And so, you know, there's a possibility that, you know, I might not, they only pull 18. Oh, so, okay. Right. You know, this is, they only pull 18 for the show. So I would like to believe that I will, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to have such an ego like, oh, well, you know, and you know, some people get on it. Oh, I was cheated. There must be some conspiracy. No, there's a lot of good potential competitors out there. There so, really is. The w- women's division is stacked. stacked. Right, it's stacked now. And so it's such a, it's so great that it is, you know, I'm just like, but if I can't do, um, if I don't get picked for the, um, for the Rising Phoenix, then I want to try to do, I'm going to, I want to try to do something in November. So before I do the Olympia, because I okay. want to kind of um, test out my new look, so to speak, mm-hmm. and make any, because something in November will give me a couple of weeks that I can fine tune just a little bit, but I want to start bringing my conditioning and bringing it down and just step on stage with the new body and get, get it comfortable on stage before I hit the Olympia stage, you know, because when you put on that mask and everything, your body doesn't move the way it used to, you know, so trying to get that get that stage flow that I'm accustomed to having. And so I want to try to get the, you know, get the, get the kinks out and everything. So I, I flow like a melody, you know, when yeah. I hit that Olympia stage. So, but yes. One more question. I'm going to let you go. And it's just for my curiosity. What was the biggest you've been on your off season? What are you on stage usually? Um, the biggest I've gotten so far, I'm up to 190 pounds. Wow. And how tall so, are you? I'm only five, five and a half and a half. That's big. Make sure that gets in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do the same thing. Don't worry about it. Right. So I do I'm the only same five, thing. I'm only I'm, five, five and I'm a five, half. So. I'm five, seven and a half. See, there you go. Right. It was like, <laughs> I take out, it was like oh, so you five, five and a half. And, and I, I think it might be three quarters, but you know, I have been lifting heavy. So I'm, a, I think I'm, 
come down a little bit, but yeah, I'm five, five and a half. But this is the heaviest that I've ever been. So, and I did a clean bulk. Um, um, last year, um, the heaviest I got to was about 175. So, wow. you know, I'm kind of excited. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. So, um, and what are you usually on stage? On stage, the, um, let me see, 20, um, I want to say about, see, I always do this. Women's bodybuilding is so weird to me. So I always do this weird. I'm like, you know, because I always think of my stage weight of what I weighed before I started carving up. And so, cause I stopped, I stopped actually weighing myself, but last year I weighed myself after I carved up before I got on stage. And so I got on stage like around 158, 159. It wasn't, you know, as well. I'm like the year before that, it was like 150, 150. Mm -hmm. So 2020 was 150. It was like 150 between 155 and 158 when I got on stage last year. And so, you know, the and what are you is, aiming for this year? I would like to try to hit 170 Damn. on stage. So I you, would hit like one, you hit 170 at five, five chiseled with your symmetry. You're, you're a dangerous competitor. Like, and so that's the whole thing. I'm like, I'm fortunate enough that because I, I've got a small bone structure, yeah, you know, I'm like, even though I would, if I can get 170 on me, I'm just like, it would, it would look really great. I'm just like, so, but if I can get between like 168 and like 170 on stage, solid, yeah, that's, you know, that's the key, solid. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you get to that and, and, in the, it, your, symmetry and and the condition that you know you could bring you're a threat you're a threat in any elite lineup at that yes. at that size this is a hundred percent true it's just you know uh, and the, that's the goal that's that's my focus is that i want to be a threat yeah i want to well, be a threat that i know that i can be mm -hmm. and so that's how i'm like that's that's just reality that's just real talk i know with my symmetry and my muscle maturity if i can bring in the conditioning and bring the size that i need I know that I can stand toe to toe mm -hmm. with anyone. So, do you want? So that's do, what I'm going for. Do you want to? Uh, do you want to call anybody out? Go, I'm coming for you. Well, the truth of the matter is, is this, <laughs> this, is, this is a sport. I'm like, I don't need to call anybody out because any any competitor that comes on your show, any competitor that is talking to anybody who does not admit that they want to win right. when they step on stage on any stage. It's blowing smoke. It's the truth. And not the good kind. No, you know, it's 100% oh, true. Because we're not doing this for the experience, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I hate when I hear, I'm doing this for the experience. Then go sit down. Yeah. Sit down <laughs> no, okay? Uh, There's uh, no participation awards. I'm coming to win. This is sport with big, this is a sport with big money involved, too. Right. And so you know? I'm just like, I'm like, even, if, even, look, even if I was to do a show that would like, if the money is not as big, I'm still coming to oh, win. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Where aren't you worried about who shows up? No, because the goal is to win. Yeah. And yeah. if I'm I, this whole thing of, you know, strategic picking shows with K2 showing up, you know, or that whole mindset. I love this one. It's just like nowadays the competitors are like, you know, we'll give other people chances to win. Why are you doing a show? Because it's a pro show and I can't. Yeah. And I want the money <laughs> and That's I want to win. It's the truth. I mean, uh, back in the day, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, mean, I don't know how many shows Milos used to do. I don't know, 10, 12 shows a year. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't like one show, get your Olympia qualification and move on, you know? Well, the thing is that when I came into this, this sport, that's what I used to hear all the time. Well, why are you doing the show? Give somebody else a chance to win. I was like, I'm so sorry. Have you not been in a sport before? That's not how this works. If you want to win, bring it. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. all it is. Yeah. If you want to win, bring it. Don't tell all the elite people not to get on the stage because you want a chance to go to the Olympia. If you want to go to the Olympia, bring it in the gym and bring it to the stage. Yeah, exactly. Like so yeah, they were, they were saying that about Ian... Uh, What's his last name? Ian Valier last yes. year. I mean, it's like, dude, he, he, you know, he's a pro bodybuilder. He could do, you could compete. And, you know, I, I you know, I, that blows me away, you know, but cause I, I think we're the same generation. You might be a little bit younger than me, but um, you know, back in the day, you know, Kevin, Ronnie, Sean, uh, well, not Sean, right. But Kevin, Ronnie flex, they would all do the European tour after the Olympia. They were, you know, they were all trying to win and beat each other. It's like, I, I don't know, whatever. Mela, I'm going to, uh, wish you a good night and I just want to let you know that it has been a pleasure and 
much respect, much love to you. Thank you so much for being on my YouTube channel podcast. And a lot of times I have um, girls on and um, we talk about like the state of women's bodybuilding or the last mm-hmm. one we had on, we talked about uh, women's bodybuilding, not being in the, in the Arnold and so on and so forth. And, Still breaks my heart. Yeah. So I try to pick people that I think because it would like um, don't hold back. Mm-hmm. Which is why I had Sheena on last time. <laughs> oh, yeah, she, she's always that's what me and her will get into real time. See, if you'd have had us both on that show, yeah, yeah we'd have we'd have went <laughs> yeah. we'd have went down the yellow brick road with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So next time uh, I will uh, extend an invitation and l- would love to have you back. You're an absolute pleasure. Well, thank you very much. I do appreciate you accommodating me and with my schedule and everything. And this was a wonderful show and I would be honored to be on it again. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck to you. And I know you're going to, I know you're going to do well this year. There's no doubt in my mind. You're going to do great. John, thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. Have a good evening. You too. Take All care. Right. Bye-bye.